Hello, and today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about why microservices. I think you know we often talk about microservices. It's definitely a hot buzzword today, but I think it's useful to go one level deeper in terms of like why are we actually motivated to adopt a microservices architecture, and what are the implications of adopting it, right? Because I think oftentimes we might not be adopting it for the right reasons, uh, or we're not fully cognizant of all the implications that come with adopting a microservice architecture. So maybe starting high level, you know, what are microservices? Why adopt them? Yeah, I think if you look at sort of the way we historically developed applications, it had a bit more of a monolithic design pattern, right? So if we had a large application that had multiple sort of subsystems, right? So it might be retail banking and you have you know, your login, your balance view, you know, transfers, you know, bill pay, let's say as an example, you might have had each of these were built by a different team, right? So each of these is a distinct application team, but ultimately they're building pieces sort of of a common app, right? And so the challenge is in this type of a setting, each of the application teams had to coordinate tightly with one another, right? Team A couldn't do a release without team B, C, and D all being ready. So what you tend to see is a very tight sort of release train where all the teams have to coordinate on when do you cut the release candidate, when do you do betas, how do you do integration testing. You have sort of almost a waterfall development timeline that comes with this. And the reason is you have this tight coupling of the organization design, right? You have these four different teams, app teams, they're tightly coupled into the application design, right? We're shipping a single app, but it spans multiple parts of the organization, right? Now this is even relatively simpler when you only have four teams, but for simplicity of drawing, you can see how this explodes in complexity you know, as you expand and if you had to say 10 different application teams working on a common code base. And so part of the design of microservices insofar as they're a technology is it's closely aligned to the organizational reality. Right? So I think when microservices are best used, best leveraged, is when you look at this organizational reality and say what we really want to do is allow each of these application teams to work independently of one another. Right? So we still have these different teams, but now what we've done is actually split them out into different unique services, right? And so each of these is now what we might call a microservice, right? We took the giant monolith, we decomposed it into its constituent parts, but we did it in a way that's ideally aligned to the organization itself. Because the goal was what we wanted to eliminate was sort of the human cost of coordination, the cost of each of these app teams having to talk to one another constantly, having to figure out, okay, can I cut a release because I have a bug in system A, you know, but code base for B is not ready to go out, et cetera. So this is when I think microservices are best used, right? When you have this larger organization, you have many different teams that need to work together on a common code base, and you can decompose such that each of them now has their own schedule. So if A has, an, has a bug, they can deploy without needing to tightly coordinate with B, C, and D, right? Now in reality, there's no free lunch, right? So you know, the human cost of coordinating between these teams on a release, that has to go somewhere, right? There still is a coordination cost, right? We're just moving it around, right? And this is okay, we're making trade-offs here. So the trade-off now becomes that great, if A wants to be able to deploy at any time because they're fixing a bug or they're adding new features, well, if they have dependencies, right? If B and C depend on A, then they have to have an API contract, right? They can't just change their API because they're pushing out a bug fix because they're gonna break B and C, right? So part of this now requires that you have a little bit more discipline, a little bit more rigor in terms of how do you do things like API management, right? You have to actually manage versioning, you have to have some sort of a deprecation schedule or work at least closely with your downstreams to coordinate what might be a breaking change, right? So in general, when you're in a mode of, I'm just fixing a bug, I'm not changing my API, that's great. You don't have to coordinate, you have total freedom. If I'm adding net new APIs, that's great. I don't have to tightly coordinate, right? As you break things, that's when you still need to have some of that coordination or you need to have you know, a well-known policy of how you do it. You, know, you add new features, you have a deprecation period, B and C can update independently and you know, move to the newer API as an example, right? Now at the same time, you also inherit a set of operational challenges when you go to microservices, right? Here, by virtue of deploying this as a single you know, monolithic application, you know, if A needed to interact with D, 
This is an in-memory function call. We don't have to worry about networks. We don't have to worry about authentication or authorization or sort of all the challenges that come with now becoming a distributed system. Right? So I think as you move into this world, you inherit a bunch of challenges. Right? Part of them around things like how do these pieces discover and network to one another? Right? So if A needs to communicate to D, how do we do that discovery? Right? So there's a whole set of sort of networking, service networking challenges right, uh, that we need to look at. So when we talk about service networking, right, the most basic initial challenge is how do you just do discovery, right? So A needs to find D somehow to be able to route to it, right? This is piece one. I think especially as we move to a more sort of secure posture, we don't want any app to be able to call any app. You have to start to think about things like, well, how do I authenticate and authorize these different interactions, right? So A might be allowed to talk to D, but C should not be allowed to, right? So I need to have some way to authenticate to know, is my caller A, is my caller B, is my caller C? That's the auth end challenge. And then I have an authorization challenge where I define and say which of these sort of communications are allowed or disallowed, right? And then as you get more sophisticated, you have things like a traffic management challenge, right? So when we talk about traffic management, you might get into scenarios where you're saying, great, I'm actually running, obviously, multiple copies of service A. Maybe I want to send 90% of my traffic to version 1 and 10% to version 2 so I can do a canary or a blue-green test before going 100% rolled out to version 2. So as you get more sophisticated, these become your sort of networking challenges that you didn't necessarily have, or at least not to the same degree, when you had kind of a monolithic challenge. I think at the same time, closely related to some of these pieces, for example, Authn and AuthZ, is things like secret management and credential management, right? If the way I'm authenticating A talking to D is I'm using a signed JWT token, or I'm using a certificate that's signed to prove my identity, well then I have a challenge of how do these applications get those certificates, get those JWTs, sign and verify transactions. So that's where you typically have sort of a secret management problem as well, right? And so this might be something where you're using a solution like Vault. This might be a, something where you're using a solution like Console that's providing the networking. And then, like I said, Vault might be providing this. But I think part of the way to think about it, again, coming back to this organizational challenges, the reason and the motivator to go to this kind of microservice architecture is ultimately I want to make these application teams more agile, right? And so what I don't want to do is burden them with all of this complexity of service networking and secret management and application deployment, et cetera, because in some sense that's gonna take away from their original goal, which is to let them focus on the application and allow them to be more agile. So I think often when you're moving to a microservices design, what's helpful to think about is what's the platform experience, right? And so what we really want ideally is that our developers are really focused on you know, their source code, their application, and then you know, to the lightest degree possible, some additional metadata, you know, this might live in a manifest of sorts, right, that describes, you know, what their application needs, what regions it should run in, upstream dependencies, configuration, things like that. And then these should really be the inputs to sort of a platform layer, right? And the platform layer is ultimately what should shield them from the reality of how this thing operates, right? Everything below this line really becomes an operational concern, right? And so this is where you really see teams that are successful with this. You have sort of a strong notion of a platform team, a central operations team, that they own everything up to this line, and the developers can really focus on what matters to them, the actual app, the life cycle and operation of that, and to the degree possible, we can mask these things, right? The platform teams obviously then have to deal with a bunch of these pieces of, you know, how do we standardize things on you know, infrastructure management and provisioning, how do we think about security and, you know, things like secret management, how do we do networking, you know, what, how, how's our application runtime actually look like, you know, what's our container runtime platform as an example, you know, how do we do builds, how do we do observability. So there's a lot underneath this line, but I think if you're going to be successful, you want the platform to largely standardize these details put that below the line, make it an operational problem or a platform problem, and then let the developers operate at this higher level, right? And I think ultimately, again, it's coming back to understanding what's the organizational problem we're trying to solve, right? It's that as we scale, 
this cost of sort of communication and coordination becomes increasingly expensive, that slows down our development velocity, right? Versus if we can move and have tens, hundreds of these teams operating in parallel, right? Not having to tightly coordinate, but instead have a set of norms around things like API management, and then allow them to operate on top of a platform that gives them that agility, then these teams can go much, much faster, right? You could be making changes on a daily basis rather than on a quarterly basis. So hopefully this gave a little bit of a useful overview in terms of you know, what microservices are and why, right? What's the organizational impact of adopting them, as well as what are some of the implications as we go down this model.